Okay guys, uh, I took a pen, since the inside of this is all going to be painted black anyway, you won't see these pen marks later. But I've made marks, I've got us lined up three quarters of an inch back to where this piece is here. And our cleats are perfectly set, so there's about three quarter of an inch gap between the back and the front. And I've made ink marks every about six inches or so up through here. don't know if you can kind of see there. But there's little ink marks there, so whenever we remove this wood, you'll be able to see where to line it back up again. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take these strips of wood loose. And it's a little harder to see, like on the black, it's still there. If you move a piece of wood, you can kind of see there. But uh, it just gives us a way to line it back up because, uh, like, this strip is perfectly straight, but the other strip has just a slight bit of bowing to it, and uh, it's small enough that you can flex it and uh, move it into place where you want it. So I can put a screw in the top and the bottom of it to hold it in place, and uh, then I can slowly flex it and put more screws in it to line it up perfectly so it has an even gap all the way across the back. So we've done that all the way across this side for this cleat which we're about to take loose and we've done the same thing on this side if you take a look we've got those ink marks as you're going down through there even on the black part of the background like I say this is all going to be painted over with more black paint probably on the inside I don't think I'll change the color and that just helps us line those cleats back up so right now we're going to take the cleats the second one loose like we have the other one and we're going to come back uh, and pre-drill everywhere we want to put a screw in there. I don't know how many inches, probably about oh, about every 10 inches or so. And uh, we're going to pre-drill. And uh, what we want to do, uh, I want to leave a slight recess for the heads of these screws. Just basically because I feel like these are small enough strips, unlike how wide that strip is. I believe these are small enough strips that if we run a screw in even every 10 inches, dead center all the way up through here, it may try to split this wood in half. So we're going to pre-drill with a normal drill bit and then with this little paddle bit near the very top of the hole we're going to just pre-drill, I mean probably a sixteenth of an inch or so, just enough to recess this head of the screw here. And if you see the head of the screw, it's got a slight, slight kind of a taper to the end of it that makes it a little fatter than the rest of the shaft of the screw. And if you look at this paddle bit it's the same way so like if I just drill down in there just enough to where the corners of the paddle here make just a little contact and barely recess there then it'll allow that screw to recess down in that wood just a little bit without trying to wedge into that hole and kind of split it and it'll just make it look kind of neater too because when you take the back off you will see these screws a little bit more than than some of these others you'll see these some when you're opening the back of the cabinet but it's not really anything for detail or design, it's just mainly to keep it from splitting. So we're going to do that, just take that extra step and uh, we're going to go ahead and pre-drill all those before we put these cleats back up and uh, the next thing you see when I come back I'll probably already have the holes drilled and I'll be getting ready to put the cleats back in place and we're just going to put a little bit of wood glue on the back of it, set it up in place, probably hold it temporarily with these clamps until we start running the screws in and uh, of course a little bit of that glue will squeeze out like it always does and we'll just clean it up a little bit as we go. Okay guys, we went, went ahead and uh, pre-drilled for our sheet rock screws here and uh, these are going to be going in these holes and we measured down two and a half inches on each one of these cleats to kind of space off the back panel and we come down two and a half inches and then we went every nine inches all the way to the end of the cleats and that left exactly two and a half inches on the other end so that should keep them far enough apart that it shouldn't split the wood but we still went ahead down through there every nine inches and we pre-drilled for the screw to go through so it doesn't split and so we can recess the head a little bit we've got this paddle bit here and that paddle bit is just going to give us just a little bit of a kind of a opening like a taper for the part of that screw that has has a little bit fatter in near the head so that whenever we do kind of countersink it in there it's not trying to wedge into the wood and separate it because it could possibly split this piece so right now we just want to just take our paddle bit and just go down into the wood, I mean just enough to where it just barely makes a place for the head of the screw. And that right there is all you need to do. It's just a very tiny bit. I'm going to do it on each one. And 
and it's just made just to recess just enough for the head of that screw to go into and just for that that wider part of the shaft near the head to just sink down into and it'll keep it from splitting the wood. So we're going to do that on each one. That'll just make it a little, a little bit easier and a little less likely to uh, split the wood. Okay guys, we're going to start installing the cleats. We're going to put some wood glue on the back side of the cleats. And uh, I'm not going to add any to the cabinet itself. I think just some on the back of the cleats will be enough since we're screwing it all the way up. And uh, we're going to start with the uh, highest screw and the lowest screw on the cleat and get those screwed into position first after we put the glue on it. And uh, we'll just have to make sure we're lined up on our marks. And uh, once we get those screwed into position, we that one cleat right there has got a slight bow in it. It bows slightly towards the front of the cabinet. So I'll probably have to just pull it slightly to keep it in line with our marks and run one of the screws in the center of the cleat end to kind of hold its position and then finish the rest of them. But uh, as I'm doing that, uh, before the first two screws go in, I'll probably have to clamp it to just kind of hold it on its mark so it's not trying to fall. So we're going to get started on that one right now. And I'm sorry if you can't see the entire cabinet, I just can't really get the camera back any farther than that. You know, we'll do the lower half and the upper half. You might not see all of it, but you'll see most of it. Get a couple of paper towels here. Okay, got our glue on. I'm going to try to carefully put this in position without making too big a mess. These cleats are pretty long, so it's kind of hard to do. We'll do our best. Okay, we're going to have to clamp them. Got the bottom clamped. I know you can't see, but we've got to clamp the top. Okay, we've got the top clamp. And the rest of our marks is just a little bit off. Like I said, the wood bows slightly. Top and bottom is perfectly on the mark, so what we need to do is run the top and bottom screws in. Go ahead and do the bottom here where you can see. Okay. 
Okay, that's good on our mark. Make sure the top didn't move. It's good. We're going to run the top screw in. Okay, got the top and the bottom on. Yeah, we didn't flush them all the way down, but we just want to leave a little bit of play if we need it. And we need to give a little flex to our uh, little flex to our cleat here. Make sure we have it on its line. Okay, we got a flex to the line that we marked, and we're going to run one screw in here. A little bit of an awkward position, but we got it on our line down here. Go ahead and run one more in. Continue to the top, you may not be able to see all of these. A little tough to see some of these ink marks on the black paint. Looks like we're dead on our line. Let's so run the other three in. Well, other two. One more. Okay, we've got them all run down. Don't have them all the way down, but I'm going to give you a little close up of what we're doing. See there? You can see our ink line there that we made with the pen. And we're dead flush with the support for the bottom of the cabinet right there. So that leads us to our perfect three quarter inch reveal. Almost perfect. It's a little less than three quarter inch, but so is the thickness of the uh, back panel. It's like 22 30 seconds. So as we go up, you see we'll continue right there. It's probably hard for you to see, but there's an ink line there. there kind of hard to see and you won't be able to see any of these on the black background in this video but they're there I apologize for my camera work right there we're on our line and when you get all the way to the top we're still on our line so we're still clamped we can take the clamps off but I'm gonna go ahead and run the screws down flush and you can kind of see the way that uh, let me get the light around You can see the way we made our recesses for the heads of the screw. You just let the heads of the screw just barely go down in there. We didn't want to go too deep or else the screw would pop out on the other side and ruin our nice looking black laminate. But you can see how it just kind of nicely recessed the head of the screws there. Just enough so it wouldn't split the wood, it wouldn't wedge between the wood the way we use that panel bit. But Gives it kind of a nice little look to it there instead of just uh, mushrooming down in it kind of like I like those screws there they just they just were sunk down in there by hand these right here were drilled so that they would 
be able to be counter sunk a little easier. But we do have to sink them down just a little deeper. We're going to do that. We'll come back and show you doing the other cleat. Okay, guys, we got the first cleat completely installed. We got our screws torqued all the way down as far as we want, and uh, we've wiped up just a little bit of excess glue. There wasn't very much at all. We're going to do the exact same process to the other cleat. as close as we can our marks put our clamps on Go ahead and torque our first screws in. We'll do the top one first. flush with this bottom board. Okay, now I just like to pick a point kind of near the center of it. Make sure we're on our line, run that center screw in. feel on the other side where the laminate is just to make sure those screws aren't pushing out on the laminate and they shouldn't be. I should have at least an eighth of an inch before it even breaks the surface on the other side. But if you drill with those paddle bits a little too deep it will let those sheetrock screws recess so deep that they may poke out the other side so you've got to be careful about that. all the way. 
Just going to take our clamps off now, clean up some of our glue, and should be done with both of these cleats. Well, we're all finished up with the cleats, guys. These are the ones that will support the back of the cabinet. So they're all installed. Clean the excess glue up. Everything looks pretty good. Everything lines up good. I've tested it with the uh, large um, five foot panel that I have in the next room. It's the big removable panel that I'm going to put on the back of this. Now we're still going to have a smaller panel at the bottom, maybe eight to ten inches, and one at the top. And I'm going to put those in to just uh, square up the cabinet, and they're going to be installed permanently. And they'll not be removable at all. So they'll be glued in place and probably either screwed or nailed in place. And uh, like I say, that'll be maybe 8 to 10 inches coming down. It may be a little more on this top panel. And then there'll be a big panel in the center here that goes down to about maybe 8 to 10 inches from the bottom. And that whole panel will be removable. So I'll probably install that with just you know four to six screws where they can be taken out easily. I'll probably have some type of handle on it. But uh, we got lucky with our cleats and we just cleared our monitor stand here. Didn't have to do any kind of modification yet. And I did some measurements to make sure when we do have our, our CGA or our uh, standard res monitor installed later that when it comes up, you know, it'll be coming up at an angle here. I made sure that it was going to clear these cleats so we don't have to do any kind of modification or anything to the brackets on it. So those two panels there just looks like a piece of wood there. But that's actually one panel. There's the other panel. That's what I was thinking of using for these upper and lower panels that were not going to be removable, but I'm just not 100% positive I'm going to because we do have some splintering where these were removed from another part of the cabinet before. And that would be showing from the back of the cabinet. And I could sand it and paint it, but the wood grain also is different than the plywood that I'm going to use for the removable panel. And I just don't know if I want that. Um, if I could paint it and it matched close enough with the paint on it, I might do it but I may just go back and get uh, one more small sheet of plywood to finish that up because uh, I thought I had enough scrap and I do have enough scrap for one piece but uh, not the other so I may have to get maybe a 2x2 uh, two two or 2x4 two sheet of plywood just to finish this that has the same wood grain as that down there because I don't want it to look odd that it doesn't kind of match up since all of it's going to be on the back but anyway one more step that's done there and uh, Still got a few few more things to do. Uh, before too long, we'll be done with all this woodwork and we could just uh, paint everything here on the inside black, including all of these like furrin strips or cleats. All these could be painted black and it'll all match. It won't look like it all stands out since you've got some that's a little darker tone, some that's a little lighter tone, and then you've got the original black that was in there and the original plywood. It'll all match up by the time we're over.